Sean, thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to Edinburgh and Scotland. Uh, and I hope that you have uh, an excellent visit to our country and to this city. And if you have any complaints, send them to me because I'm also the Minister for Tourism. Uh, you are very welcome here and I know that we have a truly international audience and a, a particular welcome to our colleagues from Nova Scotia whom I've just met and who've told me that they are about to establish uh, a, 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 with DCMS's assistance uh, two times two megawatt turbines going into the water. You're all extremely welcome to this, the sixth international conference on ocean energy. Now, water covers around 70% of the surface of the Earth. And that is why, indeed, the Earth is known as the blue planet. Uh, but whilst we have tremendous renewable energy potential in our seas and oceans, marine energy is still only a tiny part of our global energy mix. But we are confident in Scotland that the day will come that our oceans will deliver a significant amount of clean, green energy for this planet. Uh, and here in Scotland, as a European country, uh, a country that incidentally intends to remain a European country, <laughs> we are, are privileged in one sense to take the lead in pioneering our support for marine energy. Quite simply, we have the best wave and tidal conditions in the, the whole of the EU, and we want to make sure that we can exploit them for the benefit of people in Scotland and beyond. This conference's theme is from concept to commercialization, taking it from the idea to commercial array. And we understand that that is a journey full of risks and uncertainties, of technological challenge, of uh, a number of uh, difficulties for our engineers. That's a long journey, a journey that would test even Marco Polo or Phileas Fogg of Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days. Uh, and we know, too, that transforming an idea into a practical reality uh, is not easy. It was the the great English poet T.S. Eliot who said, between the idea and the reality, between the motion and the act falls the shadow. So we are under no illusions that that journey, the theme of your conference, from concept to commercialization, is a challenging one and is and will remain a long journey. But we are, ladies and gentlemen, increasingly confident that we will arrive at the end of that journey at the destination. And I want to use the next 10 minutes to set out Scotland's contribution to reaching that destination. For the past couple of years have been turbulent. There have been difficulties. There have been casualties. That, is, uh, that was never unexpected. But there have been great successes. We now know more about what does work, what might work and also equally important, what doesn't work. And we know far more about this than we ever have uh, before. Uh, I'm also delighted that the EU Commission and Commissioner Vela's personal commitment to this is, is beyond doubt, and his presence here exemplifies that, that the EU Commission's willingness to support the Ocean Energy Forum uh, and their work in a draft roadmap uh, is a sign of true leadership which we really value and appreciate and will allow us together to reach that destination. We have listened very closely to industry as the minister that covers business, energy and tourism. My watchword is listen to industry. If you do, you might get it right. If you don't, you haven't got a chance of getting it right. And we have listened very carefully to industry. That's why we established Wave Energy Scotland just a year ago with a budget of £14 million sterling. And in that short period of one year, we've had 200 organizations register, innovation, register interest in its innovation calls. Uh, and WES, 
uh, a body with just 12 of a team is now running 28 projects on important topics such as power takeoff. And we're seeing a collaboration between companies that uh, are active in the wave energy field. We've retained some of the best brains in marine energy in Scotland, and we've captured the know-how from past developers. The advisory board of Wave Energy Scotland includes Scottish Power Renewables, the Swedish power company Vattenfall, and the Irish utility ESB. Uh, and that astute group keeps WES commercially focused. You may also uh, be interested to know in passing that Vattenfall are also the developers of the proposed floating innovative offshore wind farm off the coast of Aberdeen, to which a certain aspirant candidate for the US presidency took objection. Uh, and he didn't just take objection, he took us to the courts where he was a three times loser. <laughs> we will see if history repeats itself. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, Wes, Wes and its work have led the way in trying to overcome the challenges of delivering energy from wave devices. It, it may be mother nature, but mother nature, as engineers know, is not especially maternal for much of the time. Only this month, Wes awarded 250,000 pounds for three pieces of research to look into structural forces and stresses materials and technology transfer. Equally, the tidal energy sector is taking great strides forward. And I wanted to touch on some of the specifics uh, of the success stories. Uh, Nova Innovation, and I see as Chairman Ian Marchant, formerly of SSE, is here uh, with us today. Nova is in the process of installing five 100 kilowatt turbines as part of the Shetland Tidal Array. It will supply power to some of the UK's most remote communities. Nova's first turbine was installed last autumn and is currently being put through its paces and further devices will be deployed later this year. I suspect most of you will know that EMEC, our testing centre in Orkney, uh, is providing test and demonstration facilities, but of, of late, it has been involved in a range of collaborative projects. The Reliability in a Sea of Risk project will establish industry best practice in reliability testing for wave and tidal devices. Belgian wave energy developer Laminara, Laminaria sorry, will bring its wave device to EMEC as part of a project to prove the survivability of the device in extreme storm conditions. Uh, EMEC has completed trials of its integrated monitoring pod, which uses sensors to take environmental measurements and provide real-time data feeds in high energy tidal flows. Uh, and another project that's benefited from three million pounds of Scottish Government support is a hydrogen production facility at email, uh, EMEC's tidal test site. Uh, we have seen successes from Open Hydro completing its £1.8 million Waters-funded project to design, build, and test a power conversion unit for its tidal device. And thanks to £1.6 million sterling of funding from Scottish Enterprises' Tidal Array Cabling Solution Program, Aquaterra and G Limited have successfully demonstrated their electricity cable location and protection system, which can help reduce tidal energy costs. And Albatern has completed a £600,000 Waters funded project to build and demonstrate its WaveNet wave energy array off the west coast of Scotland. Uh, and turning to the success of a, another operator, Scott Renewables. Scott Renewables, an Orkney tidal developer, has secured a further £5.7 million of investment to allow it to demonstrate its two megawatt floating tidal turbine, the SR2000. Uh, Barry Johnson t tells me they called it the SR2000, even though it looks like a yellow submarine, because they didn't think it would be too right to call it after the yellow submarine. Uh, but they are achieving great success. Uh, and last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, Maygen. This uh, will be the largest planned tidal stream development project in the world. And this is happening in the Pentland Firth 
in Scotland. And once completed, it will have 269 tidal turbines and an installed capacity of 398 megawatts. I follow the development pretty closely, and I did visit the Magen site only last month to speak to the, seat, to the team there and see the progress that they have made. Construction of the initial six megawatt phase of development is well underway, and the first four turbines will be installed later this year. Four subsea cables have been successfully installed to allow electricity to reach the shore. I saw them. Uh, I visited uh, companies such as JGC Engineering and Caithness and saw the steel ballast blocks, each weighing 200 tons. Uh, and the turbine foundation structures are being fabricated at Global Energy's yards in Aberdeen and Nig. The turbine assembly is progressing well, and the Magen team is making preparations for the next phase of development, a second, ray or a second array of four turbines. The Scottish Government has been an active supporter of the project from the very start, and we and our enterprise agencies have provided Magen with over £23 million of funding. So, ladies and gentlemen, as the Energy Minister in Scotland, and bringing my remarks to a conclusion, we believe that the blue energy, uh, blue energy uh, economy can be an engine to drive forward uh, prosperity and success in the sector. We are hugely encouraged by the successes to which I have alluded. I believe that if uh, these projects deliver electricity on a reliable and sufficient quantity, then that, of course, will lead to persuading utilities to enter into contracts with them. And that success, that success in practice and commercial terms, is the best possible means of bringing in more investment into the sector. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted in conclusion uh, working with UK Renewables, and I think this will be perhaps the last uh, time where I have the opportunity to thank Maria McCafferty for her leadership uh, in the renewable energy sector. Maria, we will certainly miss you, and thank you for all of your work. Uh, I would reflect that as you are just about to depart in a couple of months' time, you are leaving a marine energy sector at a time of hope, uh, of hope that very shortly we will see electricity being generated from tidal energy in Scotland and all over Europe, and at a time when the EU Commissioner, as we will hear shortly, expresses his own personal support, uh, and that uh, the EU's uh, money will follow where their mouth is as well, which will be immensely appreciated. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to Edinburgh for hosting the sixth International Ocean Energy Conference here. And I look forward to working with you all in the next few exciting years to deliver a world's first, the new form of generating electricity on this planet. It's an exciting time. And I think we are on the verge of great success. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.